today's topic is financial system and economic development we are going to understand the role played by financial system in the economic development of a country the prerequisite for this lecture is the lecture 1 of mba 5007 titled what is the financial system wherein we have explained uh, the features and the characteristics of a financial system and how it impacts the economic system of a country after this lecture the student shall be able to describe role of financial system in economy explain limitations of indian financial system and expound on the recent development in the indian financial system economic development of a nation depends on the soundness of its financial system today billions of individuals in developing countries lack access to basic financial services they don't even have a safe place to put their savings or convenient way to pay their bills and borrowing present a problem as well banks in many parts of the developing world simply do not offer products and services for poor households their customers are exclusively rich and middle class and their corporate clients are mostly large firms but when the poor are excluded from the main stream the entire financial sector is smaller and less efficient this hurts everyone when poor people struggle to save their lives are harder and many opportunities to build business and create jobs go unrealized but what if banks serve their entire country's entire population instead of a small percentage of already affluent citizens what if they created savings products that worked for everyone and more made loans to large and small businesses alike this would help poor households and small firms it would help to ease poverty this is how it can impact the country as a whole and the savings of the poor are moved from jars and mattresses into the formal financial sector banks can make even more loans including loans to small firms increasing the capacity of the financial sector to make loans means that more businesses can be created and grown these new and expanding business will hire workers these new jobs will help people out of poverty and the process replicated on the large scale can generate economic growth and turn and in turn reduce poverty however this vision is not yet a reality an inclusive financial system will eliminate inefficiencies promote growth and reduce poverty let us understand feature of indian financial system to understand the role it can play in the indian economy indian financial system is governed by self regulated autonomous regulators for banking like rbi markets like sebi and insurance like irda and other sectors of finance india has got a perfect 10 score in protecting shareholding holders right the size of indian financial system is enormous there are 12 psu banks 22 private sector banks 46 foreign banks 56 regional rural banks 1 1485 urban cooperative banks and 96000 rural cooperative banks there are approximately 10000 non banking financial companies the total asset under management of indian mutual fund industry is approximately us dollar 340 billion and indian in insurance industry is of usd 280 billion dollar size this is a very large size financial system and it is required for a country which has such a large population indian financial system is very adaptable and resilient system it has proven its strength time and again in the moments when the country faced financial crisis or economic crisis let us understand the role it has played or it can play in the in shaping up indian economic future in india the financial system helps economic development in many ways let us understand them one by one number one saving investment relationship 
To attain economic development, a country needs more investment in production. This can happen only when there is a facility for savings. As such, savings are channelized to productive resources in the form of investment. Here, the role of financial institution is important since they induce the public to save by offering attractive interest rates. These savings are channelized by lending to various businesses which are involved in production and distribution. The second role is financial system helps in growth of capital market. Every business requires two types of capital that is fixed and the operating capital. Fixed capital is used for investment in fixed assets like plant and machinery, while the operating capital is used for day-to-day -day running of business. It is also used for purchase of raw materials, converting them into finished goods, etc. Fixed capital is raised through capital market by the issue of debentures and shares. Public and other financial institutions invest in them in order to get a good return with minimized risk. Operating capital is getting through money market where short-term loans could be raised by businessmen through the issue of various credit instruments such as bills, promissory notes, etc. The third important role is the foreign exchange market. It in, the foreign exchange market enables the exporters and importers to receive and raise the funds for settling transactions. It also enables banks to borrow from and lend to different types of customers. In various foreign currencies, the market also provides opportunities for the banks to invest their short-term idle funds to earn profits. Even governments are benefited as they can meet their foreign exchange requirement through this market. The next is the government securities market. Financial system enables the state and the central governments to raise both short-term and long-term funds through the issue of bills and bonds which carry attractive rates of interest along with tax concessions. Thus, the capital market, money market, along with foreign exchange market and the government securities market enable businessmen, industrialists, as well as governments to meet their credit requirements. In this way, development of economy is ensured by the financial system. The next is the infrastructure and growth. Economic development of any country depends on the infrastructure facility available in the country. In the absence of the key industries like coal, power and oil, development of other industries will be hampered. It is here that the financial services play a crucial role by providing funds for growth of infrastructure industries. Private sector will find it difficult to raise the huge capital needed for setting up infrastructure industries. For a long time, infrastructure industries was started only by the government in India. But now, the policy of, with the po policy of economic liberalization, more private sector industries have come forward to start infrastructure industries. Development banks and the merchant banks help in raising capital for these industries. The financial system plays an important role in development of trade. It helps in promotion of both domestic and foreign trade. The financial institutions, finance traders, and the financial market helps in discounting financial instruments such as bills. Foreign trade is promoted due to pre-shipment and post-shipment finance by the commercial banks. They also issue letter of credit in favor of the importer. Thus, precious foreign exchange is earned by the government because of the presence of the financial system. Next is the employment growth promoted by a financial system. The presence of financial system will generate more employment opportunities in the country. The money market, which is part of financial system, provides working capital to the businessmen and manufacturers, due to which production increases, resulting in generating more employment opportunities. With competition picking up in various sectors, the service sectors such as sales, marketing, advertising also picks up leading to more employment opportunities. Various financial services such as leasing, factoring, merchant banking, etc. will also generate more employment. The growth of trade in industry also induces employment opportunities. Financing by venture capitalists provides additional opportunities for techno-based industries and employment. Then, for aspiring entrepreneurs and uh, people who want to set up industries, Venture capital as a part of financial system 
plays a very important role. There are various reasons for lack of growth of venture capital companies in India. The economic development of a country will be rapid when more ventures are promoted, which require modern technology and venture capital. Venture capital cannot be provided by individual companies as it involves more risk. It is only through financial system more financial institutions will contribute a part of their investable funds for promotion of new ventures. Thus, financial system enables creation of venture capital. Next, the financial system ensures balanced growth. Economic development requires a balanced growth, which means growth in all sectors simultaneously. Primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector requires adequate funds for their growth. The financial system in the country will be geared up by the authorities in such a way that the available funds will be distributed to all sectors in such a manner that there will be a balanced growth in the industries, agriculture and the service sector. Then the financial system promotes fiscal discipline and controls the economy. It is through financial system that the government can create a congenial business atmosphere so that neither too much of inflation nor depression is experienced. The industries should, should be given suitable protection through the financial system that their credit requirements will be met even during the difficult period. The government on its part can raise adequate resources to meet its financial commitments so that economic development is not hampered. The government can also regulate the financial system through suitable legislation so that unwanted or speculative transactions could be avoided. The growth of black money could also be minimized. The financial system helps in balance regional growth of the country as well. Through the financial system, backward areas could be developed by providing various concessions. This ensures a balanced development throughout the country and this will mitigate political or any other kind of disturbances in the country. It will also check migration of rural population towards the towns and cities. The next is that uh, financial system helps in attracting foreign capital. As financial system promotes capital market, a dynamic capital market is capable of attracting funds from both domestic and abroad markets. With more capital, investment will expand and this will speed up the economic development of the country. Then, 13th point that financial system helps in economic integration of the country. Financial systems of different countries are capable of promoting economic integration. This means that in all those countries where there will be common economic policies such as common investment, trade, commerce, commercial law, employment, etc. and will ultimately help to integrate the economies of the such nations, ultimately creating a larger system, providing more avenues and more development. Fourteenth is political stability. The political conditions in all countries with a developed financial system will be stable. Unstable political environment will not only affect their financial system, but also their economic development. The fifteenth point is the uniform interest rates. The financial system is capable of bringing a uniform interest rate throughout the country by which there will be balanced movement of funds between centers which will ensure availability of capital for all kinds of industries and all kinds of uh, the borrowers. And the last very important point is the electronic development. Due to development of technologies and the introduction of computers in the financial system, the transactions have increased many fold, bringing in changes for all around development of the country. The promotion of world trade organization has further improved international trade in the financial system in all its member countries. So we see that the role played by the financial system in the economic development of India is huge. These are only few points which I have mentioned, but there may be many more which may be allied to it. So if you look at that how 
financial system is contributing to the economic development of the nation, it's really very, very important to understand that the financial system is inseparable from the economic development of the country. Now let us understand some of the limitations of the financial system in India. After introduction of planning, rapid industrialization has taken place. It has in turn led to growth of the corporate sector and the government sector. In order to meet growing requirements of government industries, many innovative financial instruments have been introduced. Besides, there has been a more growth of financial intermediaries to meet the ever-growing financial requirements of different types of customers. Hence, the Indian financial system is more developed and integrated today than what it was 50 years ago. Yet, it suffers from a number of weaknesses. The first one among them is the lack of coordination between different financial institutions. There are a large number of financial intermediaries. Most of the vital financial institutions are owned by government. At the same time, the government is also having the controlling authority of these institutions. In these circumstances, the problem of coordination arises. As there is multiplicity of institutions in the Indian financial system, there is a lack of coordination in the working of these institutions. The second limitation is the monopolistic market structure. In India, some financial institutions are so large that they have created a monopolistic market structure in the financial system. For instance, the entire life insurance business in India was in the hands of LIC. The UTI has more or less monopolized the mutual fund industry. This has proceeded for so long, but with the liberalization started in 1990, these things have been done away with. But still, we have a number of institutions which are very large. Right? For example, we have just about uh, uh, 14 uh, insurance industry companies in India. So the and in, in few of them are so large. Still, LIC is the very very large company, right? So this monopolistic market structure is being taken care of by the government, but still the impact is felt by, there by the industry. The third is the declining role of development financial institution in India. That is since uh, earlier. Uh, after the independence, development institu financial institutions played a very important role in development of industries in India as they were providing direct finance to industries in the greenfield projects. But since uh, liberalization, as the universal banking came into picture and many of the DFIs were converted into universal banks, the role of development of financial institution in India is declining. And because of this, Many greenfield projects are still uh, short, finding themselves short of capital. Fourth limitation of the market is inactive and erratic capital market. The important function of any capital market is to promote economic development through mobilization of savings and their distribution to productive riches. As far as individual finance in industrial finance in, in India is concerned, corporate companies are able to raise their financial resources through development banks. So they need not go to public for the capital or to the capital market. Moreover, they don't resort to capital market since it is very erratic and inactive. Investors too prefer investments in physical assets to investment in financial assets. The weakness of capital market is a serious problem in our financial sector. Last limitation, but it's very important that imprudent financial practices. The dominance of development banks in the past has developed imprudent financial practice among corporate companies. The development banks provided most of the funds in the form of term loans. So there is a pre-ponderance of debt in the financial structure of the corporate enterprises. The predominance of debt capital has made the capital structure of the borrowing concerns uneven and lopsided. To make matters worse, when corporate enterprises face any financial crisis, these financial institutions permit a greater use of debt than a warranted. It is against the traditional concept of sound capital structure. So there is a requirement of a strategy of change. And yes, with the uh, liberalization, privatization and globalization brought in 1990, 
is a strategy for change has been set in place. So the, many of these limitations are being addressed, but still we have a very long way to go. Indian financial system has been into constant development and evolution. Here we would like to take up four important developments in Indian financial system since 2016. The first and the foremost among that was demonetization or withdrawal of legal tender status for rupees 500 and 1000 notes prevalent at that time. To break the grip of corruption and black money, we have decided that 500 rupees and 1000 rupees currency notes presently in use will no longer be legal tender from midnight to night, that is 8th of November 2016. With these words, the Indian Prime Minister in one stroke announced the withdrawal of what constituted 86% of Indian currency in circulation at that point of time. The announcement initially came with a list of caveats for exchange and withdrawal that have since seen frequent additions revision by the day and accompanied by stories of unprecedented disruptions of the daily life of citizens and business in aftermath of the ban. The second important bill or the development which happened in India was the passage of Goods and Services Tax Bill, aimed at doing away with the host of central and state taxes and issuing in a one test regime for the entire country. Both houses of the parliament passed the Goods and Services Tax Bill in August 2016. With the president giving his assent in September, including most of the central and state taxes such as value added tax, excise duty, service tax, central sales tax, additional custom duty, and special additional of duty of customs. GST would lead to a uniform consumption-based tax structure across the land for almost all goods and services and government had set a deadline of April 1, 2017, and it was rolled out on that date. Since then, GST is constantly proving to be a facilitator to the businessmen and the industry throughout the country. Next was the, the important development was insolvency and bankruptcy code. Again, it was passed in May 2016. Both the houses of parliament had passed this uh, bill. The new law, which does away with at least 12 different rules, some of which are centuries old, is expected to usher in an effective bankruptcy resolution system that improves the ease of doing business in India. The central government in December notified final regulation related to the insolvency resolution process under the liquidation and bankruptcy code of 2016, paving the way for operationalization of 10 member liquidation and bankruptcy board. And last, very important, was the thrust towards digitization of payments that uh, in the year 2016, extensive measures to incentivize greater implementation of digital payments with all around push by different ministries and controllers. For instance, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology laid out procedures for acceptance of electronic payments and receipts in November 2016, and a time-bound process for integration of digital payments and receipts connecting all government divisions. By 31st December 2016, almost 90% of outflows and receipts to the government divisions were made online. In the conclusion, we can say that the Indian financial system has undergone statistical transformation over the past decades. The financial sector has acquired strength, efficiencies, and stability by a combined effect of competition, regulatory measures, and policy environment. In this environment, leaders are biased towards decisions that keep them in a comfortable position. In the capital market, the progress of reforms has been impressive during the 90s. However, certain refinements are needed to bring the Indian markets on par with the major international markets. Hence, it can be said that a financial system provides a platform to the lenders and borrowers to interact with each other for their mutual benefits. The ultimate profits of this interaction comes in form of the capital accumulation and economic development of the country. Now, uh, the text and the, the content through which this uh, video has been possible, I would like to thank 
Dr. G. Suresh Babu for the concept and text. He had published a paper called Role of Financial System in Economic Development of a Country in the journal, International Journal of Multidisciplinary Research and Development in August 2018. Major part of text and concept has come from this paper. The video clip played here is from CFC YouTube channel. The link for the same is given here. Thank you so much.